all right. Well, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. We just, we love panic in America. Pull the fire alarm. We're all gonna die of SARS or Evoli or COVID-19. The country has just become a clown show and a bad science driven media is behind the wheel of the clown car. Rather than put out any sort of clear or useful information, our media just loves to whip people up into a frenzy. They'll do anything to justify it, even using really, really bad science. The American Heart Association in January of this year launched their Quit Lying campaign. Hey, big vape, quit lying. They make all sorts of crazy claims on this website about vaping, talking about how it doesn't help adult smokers quit smoking, only kids are using it. Kids are only using it because of these flavors. All these arguments held together with very little evidence, or, or none at all in some Cases. One of the backbones of this big campaign when it first launched was a study done at UCSF by Stanton Glantz making the claim that vaping doubled your risk of heart attacks. Well, on February 20th, 2020, USA Today reported, a study claimed vaping doubles risk for heart attacks. It's been retracted for being unreliable. This study was retracted and this bit of information is now gone from the American Heart Association website. It was removed very, very quietly. The American Heart Association made no attempt whatsoever to make known that this huge study that they promoted and publicized on Twitter had been retracted and that the claim of vaping doubling your risk of a heart attack is demonstrably false. Did our own Surgeon General Jerome Adams do anything himself to correct this information that he helped promote on Twitter or did they kind of just let people keep believing that vaping causes heart attacks? Criminal in my opinion. Well, here we are in March and we have yet another study from Stanton Glantz that other scientists are saying, yes, needs to be retracted as well. Alex Norcia from Vice is the only person I've seen reporting on this. I mean, maybe at all. Well, it turns out that old Stanton Glantz's gateway theory from vaping to smoking might be just a little bit of malarkey. This is the study that everyone regurgitates when they say things like, oh, vaping, you know, makes youth 10 times more likely to pick up cigarettes. How many times have we seen and heard that phrase? Lance and the authors of this study might have had some questionable math in there, as well as not accounting for certain variables in the experiment, according to Brad Rodu. Brad Rodu. Brad Rodu, follow him on Twitter, professor of medicine, University of Louisville. Brad Rodu and his team recreated this UCSF experiment with the missing variables included and determined that vaping could not be independently associated with more smoking. Could not be independently associated with more smoking. <gasps> Clive Bates said the authors of this study used statistical voodoo to reach their conclusions. Hang on, Clive Bates. There's Clive Bates. Go ahead and give him a follow on Twitter. An incredible tobacco harm reduction advocate. If and when this particular study does get retracted, I don't think we're gonna hear a peep out of the anti-vapor side on this. There's no way they're gonna go on public news media and admit that they're wrong. You know, and I always say on YouTube, they can't run from the science forever. And it doesn't seem like they're trying to run from the science. It seems like they just wanna twist it and pervert it and, and twist it into something that's so tangled and confusing, it would take years of work and peer review just to undo the mess. They aren't denying the science, they're just using their own science, you know, better science. The kind of science that Stanton Glantz does, the kind of science that gets retracted a few months after it's published and been all over the internet where the damage has already been done in the court of public opinion. And then boom, the study can get quietly retracted and removed from websites. All the media has to do is stay silent and congratulations, you've made people afraid of and hate vaping. Mission accomplished, just keep smoking. Problem is these aren't the only two Stanton Glantz studies. There are still a lot of these studies floating around out there, still being cited by big public news media outlets, still being cited and used by our own surgeon general just to spread 
fear and be scared of vaping and hate vaping. Ironically, the USA Today article that is talking about the Stanton Glance study being retracted, at the very bottom of it, has a big headline link. You see that right there? It's 100% not safe. Vaping increases risk of chronic lung disease by 30% study says. And who authored that study? Stanton Glantz. The sand is crumbling under the garbage pile of bad science that the anti-vapors have built their house on. The thing about science is it doesn't change to fit your needs or suit your agenda. They knew they couldn't run from the science, so they just distorted it. And that just seems so much worse to me. How long until the other Stanton Glantz study about it increasing lung disease by 30%, how long till that gets retracted? And honestly, how much credibility do organizations like the American Heart Association have now, or our own Surgeon General have now in light of them promoting this really junk science. Hopefully, like the CDC, less and less credible every day. All the bad science could get retracted and it would still take years to undo all the damage done to vaping in the public eye. Thanks to Stanton Glantz and groups like the Truth Initiative and Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, adult smokers now falsely believe that vaping is somehow worse for them. In light of these retractions, I mean, how many half-truths and whole lies are being presented as facts by seemingly credible people and organizations? Youth vaping epidemic, maybe? I mean, look, I'm not one to point fingers, but I think it's crazy that the United Kingdom, Public Health England, did a survey very similar to our own National Youth Tobacco Survey, only, you know, bigger and broader. They got very similar numbers on youth vaping, yet did not declare an epidemic. E-cigarette teen warnings unfounded, says Public Health England. So why did we? Well, CDC and FDA, they kept all of that data from everyone but themselves. They did press releases saying, oh, thousands and thousands of high school and middle schoolers, oh, they're all now addicted to vaping. Kids who previously would never have been a smoker. These numbers got inflated. They didn't need to prove this epidemic using numbers to anyone. Only now, years later, has the data finally been made available for other researchers to go through and verify these numbers? And the youth vaping epidemic doesn't just shrink, it damn near disappears. I'll have links in the description to everything I talked about in this video today. And I wanna end this really by encouraging everybody to do a little bit deeper of a dive on issues like this and be more critical overall, not just for bad vaping science, but for almost everything. The media needs panic and fear and outrage to get those views and those clicks and that revenue and that attention that they're seemingly addicted to. The truth, unfortunately is just not always as sexy. Anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I'll have all the links down in the description to everything I talked about in this video. And remember that no matter what any crooked politician tells you, yeah, absolutely, you guys, let's keep on vaping.